we are in session 7 today and uh, once again we will look into the, some of the basic fundamentals and we'll see what is a user defined data type, how can we create them and what it really uh, adds value to your program. And we'll see stru a structure versus class, we'll see what are the similarities between them as well as uh, what is the core difference between them. And we see uh, the comments uh, in uh, csharp.net as well as vb.net. We'll see wh what's the code comments and what's the XML comments and how we can use them. And uh, we'll see regions, uh, what, are, what are the regions all about in your programming language and how they help you to organize your code. So saying that, let's kick off the session 7. Okay, so we have seen uh, uh, the value types um, so far, which is primitive types especially. So the dot and provides all the primitive data types uh, built in with the uh, with the uh, base class library. And um, so the, the limitation with the base class, uh, uh, with the data types, the primitive data types are that um, you can have only one a value or one data type at a time uh, like a boolean or integer or ca uh, char um, but you cannot have a uh, a group of uh, um, data types uh, grouped together to represent a real time scenarios so in general when you do your programming especially in the object oriented programming um, it's not always uh, sufficient to have uh, one primitive data type to represent the uh, the objects or the entities of the real world. For example, the real world entities like uh, a car, if you take a car as a typical example, a uh, car has many attributes associated to it. If you see it a car, it, you by looking at an object, you, rep you can say that it is a car because uh, it represents a couple of attributes uh, like it has a standard shape, it has uh, something called a headlight, it has a steering, it has four doors or so on. So it has uh, uh, tires that wheels that rotate and it can move so on. So it's a general attributes that are tied up to a car. So if you want to represent that uh, real-time object in the program, uh, uh, one primitive data type will not uh, uh, satisfy the requirement. So the, for that, to satisfy that kind of uh, 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 need in the programming and especially in the object oriented programming uh, there's something called a user defined data types uh, wherein user can actually uh, tailor a group of uh, primitive data types into a one unit um, so you can have uh, um, to, to surface the number of uh, headlights a car has you can have associate that with the integer data type with the net uh, as a property. So we'll see more of the properties or the behavior or, or the uh, how you define the state and behavior of an object uh, when we really talk about the object oriented programming down the line. Uh, as a, so uh, as a part of the introductory sessions today we will be getting in towards that uh, uh, kind of a programming today. And the user defined data types are a little complex than the primitive data types uh, wherein you can have multiple uh, set of uh, uh, primitive data types grouped together as a one unit. Okay, um, so the UDDT is the general, uh, general uh, um, uh, name, naming for the user defined data types. So these are classified into two. Um, one is the structure, another one is a class. Both .NET, VB.NET and CSharm.NET supports uh, structure and classes. Uh, you can write uh, the structures and classes in general. Structures are a value type and the class is a reference type. Okay, and we'll see what are the more differences between the structure and classes with the demo and all. And uh, another question, uh, the most important question that you need to keep in mind is the all the objects uh, in .NET are uh, uh, derived from the system.object. So system.object is the, uh, the base class uh, for all the uh, data types or especially the reference data types, reference type data types in the .NET. So we have seen the system.object as a special uh, cla um, uh, class in the uh, earlier session. 
and um, so people might ask you uh, what is the base uh, um, or what is the base class for all the uh, reference types in the .NET. So the answer is a system dot object. Okay, and also uh, uh, when we were talking about the namespaces in the previous sessions, we just discussed that the system is the root namespace for all the .NET um, uh, classes. So, uh, which is provided in the BCL, which is the base class library. So, we have seen what is the base class library. So, .NET provides a set of uh, base class libraries uh, for uh, you to write the rapid application uh, programs uh, for rapid application development, uh, which provides a set of uh, classes for each of the uh, class of applications like I/O applications or data-driven applications or networking kind of applications or web-based applications and so on. So you have a separate set of libraries available which you can consume and uh, do your programming. So those that set of libraries are called the base class library. So .NET framework itself is uh, built with the CLR and the base class library. So okay, those are the two important topics we discussed in the earlier sessions. Okay, so we are clear uh, the ba the base root namespace. Uh, so this might be a question in in our next session. Okay, and this is a very fundamental question people will ask you: What is the root namespace? The root namespace is system in .NET, and the the uh, the base class uh, for all the reference types is system dot object. Okay, keep those two things in mind. That's a very very important question. Okay, so here we go with the differences between the structure and classes. Okay, a, stru a structure is a value type and a class is a reference type. And we have seen what is the difference between a value type and reference type. So to recap, um, so value types memory allocation it goes into stack and the reference type memory allocation goes into heap. And we have seen what is a stack and what is a heap, how its memory is allocated. The major difference is that the garbage collector will always look into a heap to clean up. So the uh, garbage collector will clean up all the objects uh, uh, created using class, but not the value types. Okay, and uh, uses uh, stack memory allocation and they uses the heap memory, memory allocation. So that's what we have discussed just now. And members cannot declare as protected. So we haven't gone through the um, access modifiers so far. I kept this whole uh, that topic on hold only because uh, uh, because so far we haven't got introduced to many other comp uh, elements of uh, a class or structure. So this uh, session will give you a, a good overview of uh, what is a class and structure, and then the next uh, session um, I will get into the access modifiers. <clears throat> That's again a very very important uh, topic. Um, okay, so needless to say that uh, this is important. That is not unimportant. Going forward, everything is important uh, and very very uh, key co concepts we'll be, we'll be talking. So the protector is one of the access modifier which you cannot use in structures and which can be used in the in the classes. Okay, um, if you don't understand that, don't worry. We will cover the protected concept uh, down the line. Structures cannot inherit uh, other structures or classes. So in, uh, structures cannot participate in uh, inheritance hierarchy. Again, inherit is another uh, wide topic we will be talking when we talk about the object-oriented programming concepts. And uh, uh, structures do not require constructors. And we have seen what is a constructor in the, in the previous sessions. And uh, uh, so structures you do not require a constructor, so you can uh, have a just a value type because it, you don't have to uh, create a constructor by yourself um, and whereas classes do require constructors saying that we, we have seen that the when you create an instance of a, a members you need to use a new keyword to create an instance if you remember um, the new keyword internally going to invoke the constructor which is uh, written for your classes so saying that the structures do not require constructors, that means you cannot you can create uh, uh, structures without using a new keyword. Okay, we'll see that as well uh, because as a, as you have seen uh, the um, the uh, the variables that you create in the structures, you simply say int i is equal to ten, right? Um, so there is no new operator there. When you say object, object obj is equal to new object. So that's a reference type. So every reference type 
must and should have a new keyword to create an instance. So they also must and should have a constructor. So classes require constructor. Structures cannot have a default constructors again. So structures ca uh, 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 cannot have a default constructor, but they can have a parameterized constructors. But it doesn't mean that, see, if do not require is different from cannot, okay? So it's, you can have a constructor, but it doesn't require uh, in definition. Classes can have default constructors, but structures cannot have. So, okay, the garbage collector do not reclaim structures of uh, from memory because structures are value types, okay? Um, I might ask you this question. Um, so keep in mind, so garbage collector do not reclaim structures from memory because the answer should be because structure is a value type. And garbage collector reclaim objects created in memory. So as we have seen, garbage collector will look into the heap and clean up the memory. So now we'll see the uh, in continuation to the differences, so we have seen uh, the immutable and mutable properties of a value type and the reference types. And we have discussed that value types are immutable. That means value types uh, cannot be, values cannot be changed. Uh, and that means values uh, of the, the objects that are referring to one another uh, cannot, uh, cannot be changed, saying that they retain their own copies uh, in their memory. Whereas uh, classes refer to the uh, instantiated me memory area during execution. So they share the same memory allocation uh, when you assign two instances to one another. So that is uh, means if you change one of the value, the other, val other object will also share the same value. So then it's called a mutable. Okay. And uh, in this session, uh, the code here shows the uh, implementation of the coordinate using a class and the structure. We will see how their behavior is different in uh, following slides. So if you see, the, it's pretty much a similar code uh, on both the sides. Right? So the only difference here is the structure keyword here and the class keyword here. Okay, in definition, I'll just cover you a couple of things here. These are uh, the int x and y and int x and y, these are called the private members, in other words, private fields, okay? And uh, the public int x, public int y, these are the methods in the, declared in the structure. And similarly, in the, uh, the same method signature you see in the class. And the next, uh, uh, sorry, this is uh, pretty much looks like a method, but this is a property. Okay, so that's a, uh, in vb.net, you explicitly say that this method is a property. So in C Sharp, it doesn't need to say that this method is a property. Uh, it uh, identifies this as a property based on the implementation. Uh, that goes with the get and set. We'll see that as well in the code, okay? And the this is called a method. Um, so this is a public void. A void means it returns nothing. So in, it is applicable only in C sharp. VB doesn't, uh, VB dot net doesn't have anything called void. It uh, declares a sub. So I will uh, quickly add that uh, information uh, in the next session, wherein we'll see what is a public field, what is a property, and we'll compare the code difference between the VB dot and C sharp. How you declare a property in VB dot net? How you declare a property in C sharp? and also various types of methods that you can make use and so on. Okay, so we'll have a, a, completed, a complete session on that. And today we will see the difference between a class and structure. And this method is trying to show something. So both the codes are identical. Um, only the difference here if you see class and structure. Okay. Okay, this is uh, more of a demo. So I will uh, quickly jump into the code and uh, try to show you what we're trying to see. We are trying to demonstrate the uh, classes to be mutable or immutable. Um, okay, this is the code, I believe. Okay, I just commented to make sure we have it. Okay, so demo of object mutation here, and this is the block I want to show. Okay, we'll, uh, uh, yeah, how to get rid of this as well. Okay. 
Okay, so this is going to break because someone else is also having main. So it is this one. I'm going to comment this out. So we have uh, gone to a very long uh, coding now and we'll see uh, in detail what we're trying to do here. Okay, uh, so don't worry about the commented code. Um, so in this code, what we're going to do is we have a structure and a class created. So here is the structure uh, which is immutable. Um, so this is the, uh, the structure that we're talking about. And uh, so uh, if you right click on the object here and say go to definition, you can always go to the definition of that respective uh, Cloud. And also, if you see, uh, it's completely in blue, blue in color. So that indicates that's a reserved keyword or um, member that's already implemented by you. Okay. Um, and if you say right click and uh, go to or F12. So for the sake of uh, easy reference, I just uh, kept the uh, structure also within the same code file. But otherwise, I can actually keep this in a separate file and uh, you make use of it. So this code is having a two properties. One is uh, X and Y. This is a co uh, implementation of a coordinates, like you have a, a longitude and la latitude coordinates. So similarly, uh, or X Y coordinates on a graph. So this pretty much save information of the X and Y axis, and uh, it's going to return the value. So this is the primitive. Uh, so this is the local variables or the local fields and we have exposed these local uh, data members. In other words, we call it as a data members uh, uh, using a property uh, X, which is actually returning uh, X through actually speaking as a class, as a model level, they should be notified as with an underscore. Okay, that's a naming convention uh, that will be followed to represent the global level or the class level uh, members. So since the int x and uh, the int y are class level, so just to make a differentiation uh, that these are local, we're going to make them as underscore. If you see the property, this is capital X and this is small x. Um, that is allowed uh, because C sharp is a case sensitive. Okay, I just changed that to represent uh, the, just to follow the naming convention. Okay, so this is a property which has a pretty get and setter. Um, we will see more of a property and how we're going to use it in the later sessions. And uh, for this uh, demo, we have um, a property X and Y and the method which shows the X and Y values uh, to the. So it is taking a member method uh, parameter here called an instance name because when I create an instance of this um, structure uh, here, I will pass in the uh, the name of the structure uh, to show uh, you know, when I'm uh, printing out the names so that uh, this will help me to identify um, which uh, instance member values have been showed. Okay, um, so this is the overview of a structure and similarly we have a class which has the same um, dev body to that of um, and I'm changing the name here, so written X and uh, written Y. Okay, so we are done and uh, so this uh, needs to print here. Also, I'm going to use underscore underscore because we're going to print the local variables. Let me expand this structure. It also might have complained with that. So, so this is a pretty simple structure. So this is a pretty example of a user-defined data type, wherein it, we have actually grouped two primitive data types to represent as a one, one um, block as a one data type. So this is a user-defined data type, and we can have uh, so many other members within the uh, user-defined data types, uh, which can um, uh, reflect to the object-oriented programming principles and implementations. Okay, so for now, we'll just see how these are instantiated and how they can be used. 
Okay, in our demo, so we will be creating uh, the instance of that. So this is a class um, uh, instantiation and this is a value type we have seen the other day and we will be seeing this now, okay? Let me make sure and this is a before and after. So this demo um, is trying to say the class is mutable. So how are we going to say this is a class 1 is a first instance and uh, what we did is we assigned the uh, value uh, for x as 10 and the value, value for y as 20. And we have a second instance of the um, same data type which is class 2. Remember uh, for classes we must use a new keyword to create an instance of it. Okay, and uh, the same thing will go for structure also. So structures also you will create using a new keyword, uh, but it's optional for you to create and that too again there are some restrictions so when you make it optional. Okay, we'll see that, that in the next uh, slides. And here we are actually trying to print out the values out before change the values of class 1 and class 2 using the show coordinate and I'm passing the instance name to show up in the window. One is the class one, another one is a class two. Okay, and so this will show the current state of the. At this stage, uh, since um, I have a value assigned for class one as a ten and twenty, and also I assigned uh, class two uh, with the class one instance. So this at this point, both these objects refer to the same address space because if you remember the object diagram of a class, when we create an instance of a class, it has a uh, name, type and the reference to the address where the instantiated uh, instant mem instant member is created. So uh, when I say class 2 is equal to class 1 in, uh, instance, so the uh, reference is copied here but not the value. So that's the major difference between a class type, a class and structure. So when I show out the values at this point, so I would uh, see both are referring to the same address place, so I will see both are returning 10 and 20. Okay, in the next instance what I'm doing is I'm changing the values of class 2, not the class 1, okay, to 90 and 80 and now I will um, uh, will be indicating at the command the saying that the values have changed and after that, so we're going to say after change we're going to show both the values here. Okay, we will execute till that point and then we'll come back. I will be commenting it out in this one. Okay, so, so this is an output of what we have done so far. So we will map the line by line. So at the first uh, instance when I say before change at this point we, when, we, when I show coordinates it showed me 10 and 20, 10 and 20 for both class 1 and class 2. Okay, because I haven't actually assigned class 2 values explicitly here. I simply said class 2 is equal to class 1 and class 1 got these values assigned. And since they refer to the same address, class 2 also got the same values which is x in um, uh, 10 and 20. Okay, now the mutation behavior um, will be in the next statement. So I change the class 2 members values which is 90 and 80. Since both are referring to the same address, so class 1 variables also got changed and we see 90 and 80 for both the instances. Class 1 and class 2 share the same data. So this is called um, class is a mutable because the values that you assign to a class and if two objects refer to one another they share the same memory area and if you change one of the members uh, values it will reflect to the others. Okay, so this is the basic nature of a reference type. That's why it's called a reference. Okay, they always refer to an address. Okay. If you don't want to um, want both of them to share the same address then what you need to do is you need to avoid using the class 2 is equal to class 1. 
okay uh, always uh, this is important to understand the difference because uh, in a normal programming by for some reason if you want to copy a class 1 values to class 2 values and you use a statement like this whereas class 2 is equal to class 1 then going forward whatever values you change for respect to member will reflect to the other member also so that might give you an unintended um, behavior of your code if you do so so that's uh, then that's exactly opposite when you do a value types okay the value types do copy their values explicitly Okay, so we'll see the next part. So this part we are clear, no doubts in this, it's clear. A class is mutable. And the next block uh, we will see. So it's a pretty much same code here. I have a struct, uh, only difference is that this is the structure. I'm just going to the code. If you see, the only keyword difference here is a structure and class. Okay, but the behavior is completely different. We'll see that how structures are immutable with the same scenario. Structure 1 is, uh, is the first instance. I assigned the values of x and y, 10 and 20, and created a structure 2, and I assigned the structure 1 to structure 2 instance. So at this point, according to our reference type, they both refer to the same address. But for structures, they actually copy the value, but not the reference. They are not worried about the reference, okay? That's why they're not called a reference types. It's as simple as that. And at the next immediate statement, we are showing before change, we'll see what are the values coming up here. And when I change the structure two values to 90 and 80, and they changed at this stage, we're just notifying that the values have changed. And after the change, we'll see what they're going to show up. Okay, so this is the code executed. In the first instance, if you see, we see the same behavior to that of a class, wherein, when I have x is equal to 10, y is equal to 20, and uh, I display the value where when I say uh, structure 2 is equal to structure 1, and I display the values of structure 1 and structure 2, and both actually showed me 10 and 20. At this point, when um, the structure 2 is equal to the structure 1, this time the values are actually copied, but not referred. That's the difference, okay? So the, till this point, the behavior is same. When I change the structure to values uh, x and y and then show the after change, we'll see the big difference. So since I changed only for structure 2, I see the change only for structure 2. Structure 2 is showing 90 and 80, whereas structure 1 is still showing me 10 and 20. Okay, in the earlier example, we saw that both the uh, armchairs were actually showing the same values because they were mutable and here structures easily show you that they are immutable so this is what it means the values that are assigned to an object and if the objects are referred to one another the value uh, changes for one of the object will not reflect on the other object so that means it is immutable so this is the fundamental nature of a, a reference type and value type Hope you're clear with this. If you have any questions at this stage, let me know. I uh, will try to answer at the end of the session. Okay, and uh, we'll go back to the slides. Okay, so this is what we have seen. Um, whereas class is mutable, wherein we see the, the values are changed because of a change in the one of the member. And similarly, the structure is immutable so values did not change um, based on the values that are changed for one of the member, okay? And the next uh, one of the major differences here is the you can create a structure object with or without using the new, new operator, whereas the class, you can create a class object only by using a new operator, okay? Um, so we'll see this demo. So if you see the same example um, here, I use, actually use the new operator to create instance of a structure. Whereas when I say, we can create the instance of an object just like uh, uh, any primitive types, like uh, the one I, hear, I have here, which is int underscore x. 
So this is a value type. This doesn't need to have any new operator. Okay. Similarly, I can make use of a structure also. Okay. So this is another example I have. So before we go to the next one, I would uh, uh, need to comment this code out so that I don't have multiple mains. Make sure there are no errors. Okay, so it doesn't have a main. That's what it complains. That's fine. So I'm going to have a main here. Uh, okay, so this is an example uh, wherein I'm going to have a structure here. So this is only for the structure. So uh, um, we are pretty much knew that uh, um, uh, know that uh, classes cannot be created without um, creating a new operator. Here we have a structure, and we have a two members. In this case, if you notice clearly, I don't have a properties. Um, so I just exposed uh, my private members as a public, so that you can make use of directly. And uh, I don't want to have a property so which can encapsulate the local members and expose it to make it simple and uh, show coordinates the method is the same as the old one which shows some text on the console so in this case the public structure which is uh, this one I am able to create uh, its instance using a new keyword here and I want to create the instance of this without a new keyword also okay I will if I run this program and see so both ran successfully. So there, are, there is no issue technically. Um, uh, the structure using a, a public uh, with the new keyword uh, and without the new keyword, it both ran successfully. So there's no issue. So this indicates that these structures can be created with or without new operator, whereas classes cannot be created without a new operator. Okay, we'll see that uh, uh, cl how classes cannot be created also. I will quickly make a, another class here. All I'm going to do is uh, just copy this and uh, paste this to create a class. Okay. And I'll just name this as a public uh, okay class. So I'm going to try to do the same thing what I'm uh, doing. Here, let's see what's going to happen. What I'm going to do is copy this piece of code uh, and paste it here. This is a class instance uh, CL1. I name it, and the member here is class here, and the other one with the same name. Okay. And I'm good there. And the CL1 is the name that I'm going to use here. Oh, I just have to put L here, and L here, and L here. Okay. And of course, the name that I want to pass in again, L. And similarly, I'm going to create. Okay, let's see till this point. Does it really run? It runs good. So. CL1 is the class instance which I, that I created using a new operator and I able to get the X uh, and Y values. We are done. So we'll try to create instance of a class without a new operator. Which is something like, looks like this, okay? If I'm try to compare, this is how I would like to create the variable CL2. CL2 and CL2 and CL2. Okay, will this compile? So it pretty much says um, use of unassigned local variable CL2. So this, indica uh, this indicates that um, the constructor is mandatory when you create a class. Um, why and what does a constructor do? We have discussed uh, what does a constructor do in the earlier session. The constructor's main responsibility is to initialize 
the private members with the default values or initialize their private members. In structure, what happens here is, okay, it's pretty much same behavior here. That's the reason here I have structured um, uh, public uh, members as public. If I make these private, what will happen? Okay, I'll try to get rid of this code and I'll try to compile. So what it says is X is inaccessible due to its protection level because I'm trying to actually access uh, the private members. And uh, before this, if I get rid of this, okay, this code is creating a problem. Okay, I will get rid of that too. Okay, it's the same error because at the top I'm using the same code. Get rid of that too. So again, C2, um, it is showing the same problem because structure is also giving me the same error. If you see unassigned value, use of a unassigned local variable C, uh, CO2. So what ideally bottom line is that the initialization of the class members need to happen before the class can be made use of it. Okay, so if I make a private because these X and Y values are not initialized. So in this case when I make my members as private then I must have a constructor defined so that the constructor you can use as a default constructor, in other words, uh, to initialize the mem uh, local me members and make use of them. In in general, you have you can use anything which is initialized. In other words, okay, it's pretty much uh, goes back down to your code verification aspects wherein the values that are created and initialized by the program can be used by the program. Otherwise, no. Okay, so that's the reason we have to, if at all you want to make, uh, create an instance of a structure uh, without using a new operator, then you must have a, you must declare them public. And uh, initialize the values to it. Okay, I made this public and um, since I'm not uh, initializing them, the error will not go away because I have to initialize them before I use it. Okay, see that? So that's a compile time errors um, and you must make use of it. So since I am using a new operator here, it doesn't complain for the same structure because the new operator has a, will call the implicit uh, implementation of the default constructor uh, when we have public members. So the um, the code will add a default constructor if you don't have one. So it will not, it will invoke the default constructor when I make a new call and will uh, invoke that in initialization and so it will not complain. So what will be the values uh, of these data types when I don't initialize? I have to put this back. So the default values, if you see, it's a zero and zero for int. And similarly, uh, there is a default value for each and every primitive data types. And I will show you the list of those uh, default values in the next session. Um, yeah, that's again for FYI only. So, um, so the constructors. Uh, when we discuss more in depth of constructors, okay. So this time we are, we are seeing the implicit uh, constructor. There are wide varieties of constructors that we can make use like a static constructor, an instance constructor, a private constructor or, sta or uh, the um, what else we have, the, why are there, uh, there are so many other types of constructors that we can talk about. Uh, at that time we will so show you the uh, default values, what the primitive data types will take when they are not assigned to the values. Okay, so we are clear with this um, uh, topic that um, you can create the structures uh, with or without new operator, but again, so when whenever when you have to use new, when you can use without new uh, is again subject to to your implementation. So in this case, um, 
as simple as uh, yeah so that's another key point here uh, I will take away the code that I have uh, added up here to again make it a little simple so this is a structure and this is a class and this is again a class okay and we will put everything back to track Okay, so we are back to what we had originally, where in structure was created here with the new operator, and the other one without the new operator. And if I compile this code, it works pretty good. And uh, this uh, pretty much will not work when I make this as a class, as simple as that. Okay, if I have a same thing, so it says um, use of an assigned local va variable C2. So it doesn't because it asks you to create a new instance of it. So it doesn't allow you to create instance without the new operator. Okay, so that's the key difference um, between a class and structure. So I'll roll back this to structure. The next one is the another similarities. So we have seen some of the differences and we'll see the similarities between a structure and class. So by now you might have seen uh, that uh, there is uh, hardly any difference. All I, all I'm doing is just changing the keyword uh, for the block to structure or class. Everything else remains same. So most of the similarities are very, very common between them. So whatever all you can do with class, most of the things you can do with the structure also. Like I can have a private fields here uh, as a local data members and uh, have properties uh, here also and have a methods uh, on both the sides and also implement interfaces. Um, so if you see interfaces again, a new topic at this stage. Uh, we will see more of interfaces once we get into the object-oriented programming. Um, so interfaces is a third party, uh, like an extended block wherein it has only the uh, declaration of the mem members uh, which need to be implemented within the members that inherit uh, or implement the interface. In this case, this structure is actually uh, inheriting an, um, the interface whereas the class is also inheriting interface. So there is hardly a, any difference between a structure and class. Uh, at the high level, the major difference is that the structures uh, are stored in stack and whereas the classes are stored in heap. But there are key differences which we have seen in the previous sessions, okay, uh, previous slides. Okay, one of the major differences is that they uh, stack and heap. Another di major difference uh, is that uh, um, the structures uh, can have cannot have a default constructors, whereas the class uh, can have a default constructors, and also they can be created using with or without a new, whereas class with or with only new operator. Uh, and there are more differences we'll see down the line. And uh, yeah, so this is a pretty much a demo kind. Um, so let me walk through the code. Uh, so this is uh, more of a similarities between both. So let me take away this code block. Which is fine. So I'm going to take away and comment this code. Okay, so here, okay, so constructor, this part I will uh, uncomment here. So this I'm going to take away, for now we will do that again. Okay, so we see the code sample for um, both. Okay, another interesting thing I uh, would like to cover uh, as some of the you know some of the tips and tricks uh, uh, in the Visual Studio. If I see there is an easy uh, commenting aspects here. If you see this is a multi is an XML comment that's applied here, and here it's a uh, 
just a commented uh, line of uh, statement here. So in C sharp, it's all uh, double forward slash to add a comment, and uh, and this XML commenting is very us useful to express um, the attributes to it. So we'll see more of that if I have a time today, um, and we'll cover some of the commenting features uh, available in the .NET, especially in the VB.NET and C sharp.NET. Okay, for now we'll uh, uh, see what we intend to see. Uh, this is. Uh, constructor implementation I want to take this away for now um, so we'll see we have seen that it has a private members here and has a properties and it has a method and also the implementation the implementation is uh, pretty simple actually I just write uh, write a statement saying that okay person using a structure so here I have a class called uh, this is a structure of person using uh, a person entity using structure and it is impl implementing uh, interface i human and these are the i human uh, members which is eat run talk uh, and similarly class is also doing the same thing and uh, we'll take away the constructors for now and it has the same properties um, as a unique id and a name as a two set of uh, properties added up and the method and the, uh, the implementation aspects of the uh, iHuman interface. An iHuman definition is here. So the, it has three members and whenever you inherit an uh, interface you must implement them in your code. Okay. Um, so uh, to make sure we are calling them I just wrote it as I'm calling a eat, run and talk. So both are implement, implementing the same interface. And uh, in, while calling, I'm creating instance of this uh, structure here of a variable type and I'm assigning a value 10 and the name, I'm assigning a value, my name itself and uh, show, which will show me the unique ID and name. And then I'm calling the eat, run, run and talk, which are the implementations of the interface. And similarly, <clears throat> for the class, I'm doing the same set of actions here. Um, setting the value, a uh, unique ID and the name um, and show and eat, run and talk. Okay, So if you see, I can able to do uh, similar tasks so with using structure and class. So pretty much these are the similarities. Okay, I can have a property within it, I can have a, a private field within it, I can implement an interface uh, and I can so many, do so many other things like and I can have indexers um, and uh, I can have uh, constructors within that and so on. So there is a lot of similarities between a structure and class. So this is what we have uh, just uh, uh, saw the demo and the this uh, slide shows about the kind of constructors we have and uh, how we can make use of them. So the difference we have been saying that um, structure cannot have a default constructor. Okay, what is the default constructor? Again, we'll see. So I'm just taking away this code to just to isolate our demo to constructors only. Okay, this is the constructor block. This is the constructor block for class. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, since I have taken away the constructor code here, it is complaining. So I'm good now. So uh, here if you see the constructor, right? Uh, what is a constructor? A constructor is a, a implicit implementation or the explicit implementation. This is an explicit constructor in other words. So the default constructor, uh, so if you see the what do you mean by implicit constructor? Uh, the constructor that is implemented uh, by dot net uh, uh, from its base class which, which is uh, obj system dot object so I have a class here although I haven't uh, implemented uh, system dot object implicitly my class will uh, implement uh, inherit from the system dot object okay so that's an uh, uh, implicit uh, behavior uh, of a doesn't go further here. So when it goes, when it uh, uh, inherits a system dot object, it has an implicit constructor which will be uh, available. Implicit constructor in the sense a default constructor 
uh, with uh, without any parameters okay if you see this is the constructor how I say this is a constructor the constructors have a unique uh, name the name of the constructor or the name of the method it looks like pretty much a method with an access modifier public and a name this name always goes with the name of the class so that's the unique identity of a constructor if the name of this method is something else then it uh, for example class 1 so this is not going to be a constructor in this case I have to explicitly say some written type say void okay so this becomes a standard method <coughs> okay and um, okay so it is different so this is a, uh, complaining about a different thing because it I'm making use of the default constructor here and uh, I don't have a default constructor and uh, uh, when I have a parameterized constructor I must also have a default constructor that's the notation it goes through so we'll see more of a constructors which is a lengthy topic again um, for now uh, where am I I am I just commented out Okay, so I was trying to change this to a different name other than the constructor to show the difference between a method and a constructor. So constructor will not have any written type, number one, and the name of the constructor will match the class name. And similarly, of course, this is called a default constructor or parameterless constructor. Okay. So what I'm trying to do with the default constructor is if no one passes any value to my uh, members unique idea name I am actually setting some default values here. I'm setting it as a 99 as a unique ID and the name as unknown. Okay and uh, but for structures I cannot have a this for the structures I cannot have a parameterless or default constructor. How? I try to add one and see. All I need to do is I'm going to take away the members and I'm trying to set uh, same 99 and some name and try to compile this. So it simply says the clear description of the error. If you say um, structures cannot contain explicit parameterless constructor. If you say the keyword say explicit parameterless constructor. So explicit uh, means uh, user defined uh, parameterless constructor which you can have with these classes but structures cannot have an implicit parameterless constructor is already there uh, inside uh, your code because of your system dot object uh, derived from the system dot object implicitly so it has a default constructor and explicitly it says because explicit parameterless constructor is what user defined constructor is about Okay, so we, for structures, you cannot have a default constructor. So I'm going to take this away. So that indicates, and I, but I can have a parameterized constructors. So wherein what I'm trying to do is I'm having the same name to that of a structure name, and taking the values from outside, which is a, a UID and the name as an input parameter. And I'm assigning those values to the my local variables, which is UID and name. So in this case, how we can how we can make use of this? It's going to be pretty interesting. So in the earlier statement, what I did here, I created an instance of it, and I assigned a unique ID explicitly and name explicitly here. Okay. So in this case, what I'm did is when I as part of the new, I pass the ID and name Oops, sorry and the name so I uh, it pretty much reduces my line of code here so I have to have explicitly say that and otherwise I don't have to do it here so I'm trying to show this values outside and both will be doing the same thing and similarly if I check here I am doing the same thing with the um, with the class Okay, so this is a, a structure uh, using the new new keyword and creating the instance of the. Uh, <coughs> okay, let me so it's gone. Uh, 
Um, so it's creating a new instance and uh, again it in implicitly invoke the default constructor there and we are assigning a value here and uh, but you cannot have an explicit uh, constructor explicit default constructor for structure so keep it in mind you cannot have an explicit default constructor or parameterless constructor for structures whereas for uh, classes I can have so in the class I have two constructors one is with the parameter less or the default constructor wherein I am able to set 99 or unknown whenever no the uh, no one passes any value to it. In other words, I have a diff, uh, parameterized constructor wherein I'm taking user ID and name as a parameter and assigning the uh, local variables with that. So if you see the properties, we're actually referring to the same uh, local variable. So wh whatever value I'm setting here, that same value will be read out using a properties. So properties, uh, just to give you overview, uh, properties uh, are the uh, uh, members of a, a class or structure which can control the values that are assigned to the data members. Okay, this is if you see the private data members here. Um, so if you want to restrict uh, what value this can be assigned and who who can access it, so on, adding restrictions. Uh, if you make this as a public, then anyone can access it directly, then you will not have any control over that. To gain a control over that, I can uh, add a property uh, like a unique ID and uh, return. So return statements is a get block ha will give you the return statement. So you need to actually write a return statement. Uh, get means whenever you read a value out, it say it's, uh, it's about a get and set is whenever the value you are setting a value to it. Um, so this is a value is a special pro uh, special input parameter that is received. <coughs> Whenever you assign a value, so in other words, I'm making use of a property in this way. So unique ID is equal to hundred. So whenever I'm setting a value as hundred, I receive this hundred as a value to the property. Whenever I'm setting it, so I'm doing like some kind of a validation here. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is uh, I'm validating that if a unique ID is not equal to zero, then take it. So if I try to assign zero, then I'm not going to take the value. Okay, that's what it means. So we'll uh, see that as well. And similarly for uh, the name, I'm uh, checking if it is <coughs> null or empty. The value, incoming value should not be null or empty and then only I'm taking the value, okay? So in this case, I'm not actually throwing an exception when uh, this uh, uh, if statement fails. Uh, I'm simply uh, ignoring it. Okay, um, so in this case, it will not uh, raise any runtime exception. Uh, we'll see that uh, how it is working and not uh, uh, in the in the next exercise. Um, uh, for now, we are trying to see the, the uh, parameterized constructor and the parameterized constructor in the class, and also making call of them using the parameterized constructor of a structure. Okay, so this is a code snippet that is trying to show you. Uh, in the first instance, uh, we have created the <clears throat> instance of the structure and assigned 10 and 20, uh, 10 uh, as a user ID, a unique ID, and the name. And the next instance, I was trying, uh, I passed the values uh, to the instance directly using the parameterized constructor, and I see those values written out. Okay, and uh, in the next instance, uh, I try to do that with the class. Uh, the first class I have assigned explicitly with 100 and uh, guy 3 and I see guy 3 there and uh, also uh, I'm using the default constructor here. If you remember, for the default constructor, I assigned the value as 99 and unknown. So I see 99 and unknown here and the parameterized constructor 20 and Gopinath um, I see 20 and Gopinath. So this is the default and parameterized constructors for both the um, uh, the structure and classes. For structures, I cannot have a uh, explicit parameterless constructor. That's the keynote here. Now we'll uh, <coughs> uh, see the validations that I have on top of my properties.
Okay, so I'm trying to control the assignment uh, of a unique ID using a property. I, I, so this indicates that for this class, so oh, this is for class. So for this class, uh, person using class, it um, restricts uh, value to be taken other than um, uh, if it is zero. If it is zero, it doesn't take it. And for name, if it is a blank name, uh, then it doesn't take it. So we'll see that how it's going to work. So in this, uh, I will uh, take away all the other code to keep it simple again. Okay, and um, we will use only the class. Of course, similarly, you can also apply for the structure. The property-wise, there is no difference. So I have the same code for, for the structure also. Okay. So for now, we'll see for the class. Okay, so I'm going to create uh, with the parameter less and then we'll do it because this will be more close to the manual assignments and uh, we'll try to assign something that is not acceptable. Okay, and uh, for here I'm going to set to zero and here I'm going to give a, a blank uh, space. Okay, so let's see what it is going to write out. So unique ID it's taken as 99 because it doesn't match and the name it's blank. Uh, name it is blank. We cannot actually see the difference uh, how it is actually behaving right because the output doesn't make any sense to us. Um, we will um, add a breakpoint here and see how they're working. So get and set for name and uh, get and set for these. So if you see, um, because the default constructor got invoked uh, in this case, I got unique ID assigned to uh, zero. Okay, I'm going to rerun this to we see the step by step. So again, I refresh your debugging skills uh, wherein I had a breakpoint here and I'm trying to get into the values here. So we have called the default constructor here and at this stage, uh, the unique ID is already assigned to 99, if I see. Because um, parameter less constructor I called and it invoked the, uh, the parameter less uh, constructor. Let me collapse this, okay. So in this, in this case, I have unique ID assigned to 99 and name is also assigned to unknown, okay. If you see, a name is unknown. And uh, I'm stepping into the core using F11. Oh. Okay, it steps over anyway for the properties and I'm getting into the code. So what I'm getting here is a value is zero. I'm assigning if it is not equal to, that's why it didn't assign. So it retained the unique uh, ID, which is initialized using the default constructor. And, and I'm getting into this. So somehow the spaces were ignored. If this is not equal to is null, uh, so I will evaluate this. So I see a deep uh, error with my logic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and say uh, quick watch. So what, which is the best approach to evaluate this? If you remember, we did talk about the immediate window if you remember. So we can actually debug this statement and see what is uh, wrong with this statement because I don't want to assign um, the value if it is a null, right? So what I'm trying to do here is I'm use, making use of this debug statement here. So this is actually evaluated to true. Uh, what it says is, uh, so this is false. What it means um, is null or empty of string is evaluated this null to true. So that means my logic um, uh, is actually evaluated because it is not um, empty. I'm trying to uh, evaluate it, uh, assign the value to it. So what I need to fix this is, I need to remove the uh, not operator here so that my code will be fixed, okay? So this is how we can use the debugging uh, features in Visual Studio. 
and if I run that code, let's see what's going to happen. Still debugging. So it got the uh, initialized value which is unknown. Okay, the initialized value from the default constructor which is unknown. What it's trying to do is my validation is successful, so it doesn't take the value um, which is uh, not a valid value here. Uh, and so, how if I want to handle the exceptions, uh, that's a completely different topic. So, in this case, whenever an invalid value I'm assigning uh, is invalid, then I should be able to raise an exception saying that hey, you, you uh, the values that are assigned are invalid, and show the appropriate errors. Okay. Exception uh, handling is an uh, again a wide topic. We will be talking down the line. At that time, we will probably simulate the same scenario and uh, try to handle the exceptions. Okay. So this is about the similarities and similarly uh, a structure and a class both can have even the delegates and events. At this stage, we are too uh, new to delegates and events. So um, we will talk with examples uh, similarly down the line. So when we do more of a more of a complex programming down the line, we will be using more of these uh, sk uh, debugging skills um, or debugging tools available in the Visual Studio. So um, make your hands wet in that area. Look out for Ad Watch, uh, Watch Window, um, Quick Watch, uh, Local um, Locals Window, Immediate Window, and so on. So we have uh, discussed uh, quite a few, especially the Attached to process is something very rarely used. Okay, don't worry about the attached to process. Um, we will be mostly using all the other debugging, uh, conditional uh, <coughs> bookmarks and uh, breakpoints and other things. Okay, so uh, since both are similar in m many areas, except that um, um, both have a couple of very important distinctions uh, that structures and uh, the biggest distinction is the structures cannot be used for inheritance. Um, for example, I able to implement an interface, but I cannot inherit another structure or class. So that's the major uh, uh, difference, uh, which will not make structures fit for object-oriented programming. So classes, I know, on the other hand, uh, can uh, inherit and implement um, uh, interfaces or any other classes also, which will make them suitable for object-oriented programming. Okay, so, but still, saying that uh, structures are useless, no, certainly not. So they are very, very useful in a very small uh, usage-wise, uh, when we're going to choose structure and when you're going to use a class. So that is going to be a very good, important uh, interview question. So since we have so many, so many similarities between a structure and class, so when will you use a structure and when will you use a class? Okay, so always remember, keep key thing in mind here is uh, goes back to the value type and reference type. So value types when we will use is whenever there is a uh, scope of a small in size. Okay, whenever your size of a uh, class or uh, entity, you expect that to be very small. Uh, in one of the simplest example we have is the coordinate. Okay, you have an x and y coordinate that you can dot on a graph. So you can uh, over a period of time, if you want to have a thousand uh, uh, coordinates uh, stored in your array. So the structure is going to be very lightweight. So it's a value type and it's going to use the stack memory allocation. So structure is very very uh, efficient when they are small enough. If you make uh, a structure uh, heavy with so many properties, methods, and uh, implementing an interface, and uh, so on, so it's going to be become very heavy, and that way, uh, value type, because it's a stack memory allocation, its performance will be degraded completely. So in those heavy uh, objects, if you need a heavy entities implementation with several properties, several methods, and so on. So a class is the best option, wherein classes use a reference type memory, which is in the uh, heap type, heap memory allocation, which is faster for larger size and mem uh, size in the memory. So performance-wise, structures are good when they are small, and classes are ideal when they are large in size. 
and similarly uh, when they pa uh, when you talk about the object oriented programming so you have uh, one class inherit from the other class uh, and uh, extend their properties and, and common their commonalities and other things uh, which we'll see in object oriented programming so for inheritance hierarchical programming you cannot use structures because structures don't support inheritance if you have seen uh, structures also don't support a protected members um, so in those all cases we'll go for a class okay and uh, that's the uh, key differences between a structure and classes we have seen with examples and um, and so on um, so that takes our uh, session for the day to the end and if you have any questions uh, with respect to the uh, session um, so for the structure and classes uh, do let me know we will handle those questions and answers now uh, I'll show you some of the commentings uh, since we have some time here okay um, so instead of keeping that as a separate session I'll cover that today okay a couple of uh, um, useful uh, tips and tricks okay when you writing a, a lengthy code okay so if I see in this uh, section here I have a uh, number one comments okay so we have seen that there are so much of a code here and it is hard to read okay so how to make it a readable code number one so first thing first um, what I'm going to do is um, so if you see there's a collapsible uh, um, windows around here uh, for the class I can collapse it at this level and also I can cl collapse at this level and this level so if you see now it is pretty clean enough to see okay this is a uh, class which is a main program uh, and I have a structure I have a class and an interface okay so this is pretty easy to view but um, this uh, collapsing is not <coughs> available when I get into the, when I expand the class so I would like to add the same functionality to my private fields how I do that there's something called a region hash uh, region and provide a name to it I'll say simply private fields okay I'll copy this up and paste it here and at the end I will say hash and region okay so if you see it's automatically uh, aligned and uh, I'm done so I have this collapsed window now okay it's pretty easy and uh, very helpful so if I have uh, 20 to 30 private members here I can actually group them up into a region and then collapse it and similarly I will apply that same thing to the constructors here okay I'll say uh, hash region and uh, give a name which is saying constructor I can either put it uh, within quotes or without the quotes which is fine hash and region if you see the syntax here right region and end region this is more uh, of a familiar keyword like uh, start and end which is ideally uh, applicable for uh, vb.net kind of coding so in vb.net I use the same this is a, a advantage if you see vb.net it actually gave you the hash uh, constraints if you have a constant if region right which is not available in C sharp C sharp is a bit um, uh, not that uh, user friendly when it goes to coding um, so similarly if you see hash it doesn't say anything okay it doesn't show anything it says region and then give properties okay I'll just say properties and uh, I will end the region at the end of the properties hash and oops, there's no space so this is the trouble with C sharp you have to remember those keywords otherwise uh, uh, intelligence is not that helpful in uh, um, C sharp coding and uh, <coughs> some of the experts claim that that is a uh, good feature uh, the reason being uh, when that uh, uh, IntelliSense being so helpful uh, for programmers like the VB.NET uh, people consider that um, it's more resource intensive and uh, it will uh, take uh, 
a uh, lot of time for compiling a large applications. So here if I, if I say right just uh, enter and it just came in end region directly. So there is a kind of a flexibility usability wise um, uh, functionality wise right uh, ID for both the languages makes little different okay so this is much collapsible and much easy in vb.net and uh, whereas um, okay we were here right okay so I just added the couple of regions there and I'll add another region in C sharp here for methods Okay, this is a different set of methods. So I'll say and region and similarly <coughs> this is for uh, interface numbers. So I'll keep this separate. Okay, so this way my code is pretty neat and clean. I can uh, collapse the section so I can see a higher view of my class. So this gives me a pretty good uh, view. Okay, so next uh, another thing is the commenting aspects. Right, we, you have seen um, so much of comments here uh, with uh, multi-line comments here. I can have a multi-line comments in um, uh, I um, normally my IDE this is uncomment command I can use this I can also do an, a multi-line command like this okay so this is a multi-line command in C sharp uh, this um, for some reason the IDE will not make use of that uh, it always applies to the line so line commenting is a forward slash okay this is command this pretty much uh, uh, informs the compiler that ignore these uh, statements and don't compile them. Okay, and uh, what about the other comments that you can apply? So in, gen in most of the cases, you use this uh, uh, for uh, commenting a, a line of code or even uh, uh, giving a information about what this code is doing. Okay, like a private fields in this case. So there is a better way of communicating information like this, uh, like a private fields. In this case, what I'm saying is, this method is a parameterized constructor. Okay, uh, I will make it more user friendly. Um, okay, I'll say. Okay, this is a um, person using structures parameterized constructor. How I added this uh, XML commenting? This is called an XML commenting. Okay, so what I need to do is. Uh, to add that XML commenting, I need to hit three times forward slash and I will see XML commenting. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to just say uh, unique ID. <coughs> how this is useful and how this is different from this. There's a big difference, okay, and I can also apply the XML commenting for. Uh, the class level or structure level. Okay, I'll say uh, structure implementation, uh, whatever text, blah, blah, blah. I can give whatever information that I want to pass on. Um, so how is it going to be useful? It's going to be useful when I'm going to use it in my code here. So I'm going to say, uncomment this out. So if I put my uh, so hmm, let me build this up. Probably this will show up. This is not showing up. Okay, so in this case, if you see uh, unique ID, it is showing up at the bottom of the tooltip saying person uh, using structures unique ID. Uh, this is the text that it is retrieved from the my XML comments. Okay, in the structure, I have an XML comment saying um, unique ID has this one. So I'll say testing to make sure this is the one that is reflecting there. So the structure's unique ID property has a text to it. So whenever user is making use of it, they can see that 
text here. If you say testing users So if you see the testing, um, okay, a spelling mistake, but don't worry about that. Um, testing unique idea. So this is how you can make use of the XML commenting uh, to display as a tool tip, as a help uh, for those who consume your library once you distribute it, okay? And uh, similarly for name, I, I did not add anything there, so I can add uh, some XML comment there so that uh, people can um, make use of it. And yes, I think, um, yeah, this is a constructor that I have, have and for the constructor I have uh, added this. Usually it should give more than this. See, if you see um, that comment, whatever I had earlier uh, was added before adding the parameters to it. So if I have parameters in this case, it also gave me, uh, this is, I'll say, um, my, Parameterized constructor, okay, and similarly for the respective members, okay, um, pass the unique ID. I'm just saying whoever are using this method, pass the person name. So I'm just putting some useful text so that whenever people make use of this, I compile this and uh, um, so this is for what? This is for the structure. Yeah, this is for the structure I added. So I'm going to make use of the structure. Where is the structure? So yep, yeah, here is the structure. <coughs> okay, so when I'm uh, making uh, instance of this, the second uh, overloaded member like if you see UID pass the unique ID here and okay I'll pass the unique ID say 10 and the space so it highlighted the next parameter and the name what it is expecting pass the person name so this adds the information and also if you see my parameterized constructor is the text that goes to the constructor implementer so this is more like a help uh, tool tip that you're adding to your code itself with the comments, XML comments. This is also useful, uh, the kind of comments that you add. There are tools available outside in the market as an extended um, uh, plugins of a Visual Studio using which you can actually generate a help file for your code uh, just like MSDN. If you see MSDN references of any methods, it has a similar information like which is this is the class, this class you're going to use for so and so and this method is for so and so and description and how you want to use so that kind of documentation you can extract from your XML commenting from your code so that makes your code very useful so especially for a product based uh, uh, implementations this is going to be very useful and more attention is paid at the writing the comments So in this session 7, we did walk through the .NET user defined data types, uh, UDDT in general and uh, uh, how can we achieve uh, or create UDDTs in uh, uh, .NET by using uh, structures as well as uh, classes. Um, the fundamental difference is a value type for structures and the classes or reference types. And we did walk through the differences between a structure and classes and uh, with a very good uh, demo and a code example, so the structures uh, mutab immutable behavior and the classes mutable behavior, we did uh, see a very good demo. And uh, this is a demo uh, with the differences, especially, and again, we did walk through the differences uh, uh, with and without new operator for structures and uh, using a new operator to create an instance of a class uh, and structures with a very good demo. And also we did see the similarities between the structure and classes uh, wherein we see we did see a very good demo comparing what all we can do with both uh, structure and classes uh, as part of the similarities. And uh, this is another slide to showing uh, the similarities of having implementing an interface with the structures and the key thing to note here is that uh, if you implement an interface in a structure the uh, the boxing will take place implicitly 
because the structure is no more going to be like a value type. It's going to be type cancer to a reference type and uh, put it in the heap. So that's a key thing to note, but ideally, technically, it is possible to implement an interface in a structure. And usage-wise, uh, when you can use structure and when you can use classes, we did walk through. And uh, with that, uh, we'll get into the next topics in the next session. Mm -hmm.